Hello, beautiful souls. Hello to day two of Prove It. How are you guys doing today? When you're hopping on, say hello. I'm coming to you live in the High Performer Coaching Community. And so if you haven't caught day one, that's okay. You can still watch this before you watch day one because we're kind of be moving into another topic. Um, but day one is in the guide section. Um, so sadly, I was gonna put these on YouTube. That's really what I wanted to do. Um, but all of a sudden this week, apparently you can't download videos off Facebook. Now they keep them. So shitty, um, sad, but I might actually just do one for YouTube and, do, and get it transcribed and do it that way. I don't know what's going on, but you should have these little three dots and you could download the video because I did it last week for a video. So if any entrepreneurs are on right now, if you guys experience this, let me know. It's so weird. Hello, Sherry. Hello, baby. Hello, beautiful. Hello, Chris. Hello, Rebecca. But yeah, so I'm so happy you guys have loved day one. I've had so much amazing feedback, people jump, jumping into the self-mastery program. Um, I will be posting links. We're still going to do the draw. So actually, before we get started, I will mention we're going to do the draw Monday. I'm going to put um, an event. Hello, Brianna. Um, I'll put an event so you guys know when that will be on Monday. Um, so everybody who's been sharing, tagging, um, me on social media, even sharing the video from yesterday. Hello, Lenny. Hello, Patricia. I haven't seen you in so long. Hello, beautiful. Um, but I will be doing a draw. So first prize that I pick out of the draw will get completely free tuition to any of my programs. And then second and third place will get 50% off to any of the bundles and um, programs. Hello, Kelly. Hello, Amy. Hello, Kristen. So many beautiful ladies hopping on. So how do you guys feel after yesterday? I'm getting a lot of amazing messages. I have not read through all of them, so just be patient with me and my team. I love reading my messages, but sometimes they get a lot, So, but my, but my team will let me know who's from who. And if you guys do want to jump into programs, just, you know, in the title, say the program that you want to jump in um, and we'll do that. Um, but I'm loving the breakthroughs. I'm so happy. What was your biggest takeaway? If you want to let me know and hashtag replay. Um, it was an amazing masterclass. Oh, I'm so happy, Patricia. I'm so happy to see your beautiful face. You look so happy in your profile. Um, but let's like, yeah, let's dive in. So I will say today will be tangible. We'll be really more focused to the entrepreneurs um, because the entrepreneurs, we are the limitless minds. We are the ones that want it all, the freedom, the time freedom. Um, and we're the ones that really put ourselves out there. And so today's conversations are going to be a lot about being misunderstood and what to do with all of that. But I will say there'll be things coming through because it's live and it will be tangible to anybody because this is what I have found. When you change, unfortunately, sometimes people that you love and people that are around you start to feel a little bit not good about themselves around you. And, and it really hurts your heart and soul because we love people and sometimes we stop our growth because the people that we love the most really misunderstand us and sometimes it just happens. Sometimes when you become more successful, people around you start feeling not good about themselves. It's nothing to do with you. They just start feeling not good about themselves and then they go away and it's really hard. And sometimes we stop growing because we don't want to lose people. And so, you know, what? even though I'm going to be talking about entrepreneurship and being visible online and, and all the things we're going to talk about today, it's going to be applicable to anybody that's changing their life. Hello, Donna. Hello, Rachel. Um, so true. They feel th threatened by a growth. It's not always that they feel threatened. It's just, this is what happens. It's just like, you're not feeling good about yourself. And all of a sudden this hot, sexy fit person comes and is beside you. And then you just start feeling not good about yourself. And then you make it mean that they're a bad person. And this happens. And sometimes I don't know why humans do this. But sometimes we feel like we belong when we're like the best one in the room. And then when people feel like, you know, you start feeling inferior to them, then it's like, ugh. They don't want anything to do with us, but the thing is it's equal power, but different, but we've not been taught this. So we're going to talk about some stuff, but even if you're not an entrepreneur, a lot of this stuff is going to be relatable. Um, but yeah, sometimes people go, but you know what I have found? Even though I have lost people, they have come back. And I've had pe friends that have disappeared and then they've jumped into my programs and it all works out the way it's supposed to be, okay? So also I'm gonna say, if you wanna still be in the draw, just take a picture or you can use the graphic and tag me anywhere on social media. Um, and then all men, women, teenagers are welcome to listen to this. So let's dive in. Okay. so. It's so easy to get motivated. Like how many of you guys are motivated January 1st? And let me know in the comments if you're 
energy starting to dwindle, or if you're getting a few prove it moments and some hard things, let me know. Because it is easy to get really motivated when we're fired up by a new year or a new month or Monday, right? But what's really hard is sticking with things when we don't have the evidence right away, right? This is why only a small percentage of the world have all the success in every area of their life, like in every every, every level of their life, right? Because when we're doing something and we're actually putting our heart and soul into something and there's just no evidence, then we don't want to play anymore. It's not working. I must be broken. Um, Brianna says, so what? It fell to January 1st and holding strong. Yes, Brianna, amazing. Uh, Kristen said, energy is still strong, super motivated. Amazing, I love that, right? So when you think about your kids going to school, let me know if you're a parent on here, but when your kids go to school, like, so now it's been what? How many months have they been in school? Four or five? I don't even know. But every single day when my four kids come from school, I'm like, what did you learn? Who did you see? What did you do? And their response is always like, nothing. I learned nothing. Nothing. I'm like, okay. You know, but you know, and I know, obviously there are things being ingrained in their brain. They are, they are learning. They are growing. They are evolving, but they don't see it that way. Right. And sometimes they just don't even recall what the heck they learned, but they are learning, you know? And so I have a four-year-old. She's about to turn five on Monday. Her name is Rhea and she um, came out bald and she's got blonde hair and it's taken a long time for her to grow her hair, but she really wants to have hair like Rapunzel right and um so her hair is like up to here right now and every few days i'm not joking she's like did my hair grow is it is it is it in the back she thinks you can't see it she's like is it touching my bum yet is it growing and i'm like she's like how much longer till it touches my bum and i'm like just be patient it is growing of course your hair is growing right we know that but she doesn't know that right because she's looking in the mirror every day and she's like it's it's still here it's still here mom what are you talking about right so this is how we all are. We have this childhood like mentality where it's just like we're consistent with things and we're not getting evidence, right? And unfortunately with the internet and with people's highlight reels and they're always celebrating stuff, we live in a world of immediate gratification. We want instant gratification. And it's so hard to watch other people, oh, look what I did and I did and I did that, right? Everybody's sharing the highlight reels. But the thing is, every single action that you're taking it is compounding whether you see it or not it is right so if we think about like farmers before they even knew what the heck they were planting and they're finding seeds you know however that came about you know they didn't know what the heck they were putting in the ground but they invested in the labor and they watered the crops every single day even though nothing was sprouting and they had to believe and they had to keep showing up and they had to hire people to help right? Because fruits and vegetables and whatever seeds they're playing around with, they grow at different times, you know? So even though you might be working towards something and not seeing the instant results, just breathe, okay? Beneath the surface, things are growing, okay? And it's kind of like putting a popcorn bag in the microwave. Have you guys noticed? Like, it's in there for like, it's like a minute and a half. And it's like, nothing is popping yet. My popcorn is broken. It's not broken. But by the time it's almost like two minutes, it's like pop, 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 everything pops, right? If you put a thing of like butter in a pot, it doesn't melt right away. You're just like sitting there and you're just like, why? I think my butter's broken. I think my oven's broken, right? And then all of a sudden the compound effect takes into place and everything melts, right? In matter of seconds. It's, that's how the compound effect works. It's like you're putting actions towards things over and over again and eventually it's like pew, you guys have heard of the compound effect, right? You've heard of the penny, right? If you double a penny every single day for 30 days, you have like, I think it's like $5.4 million. But for the first few days, it's like taking forever and ever and ever. And most people will take out their money. And this is what people do is they don't see evidence and then they unplug. It's not working. I'm broken. I'm the only person in the universe that doesn't get to have what I want, mm, right? Like. And it's just like your kids, it's like, I'm not learning anything, but they are, things are being absorbed in there, right? You know that you do change over time. I would love for you guys to even just go on your, if you take a lot of pictures every day, if you're an entrepreneur, I'm sure you do, go look at January 1st last year and look at all the things that you've accomplished. Look how much you have changed. We are growing, we are changing over time, but we want immediate gratification now. We want evidence now, especially with things where we invest money in. It's just like, I need the return right now, right? But that's just not how it works. Like, but when we don't have evidence, we tend to just give up and we don't wanna play anymore. 
But that's what faith is and trust is. It's believing in things that we do not have evidence of yet. And that's why discipline is so important. Here's the thing with discipline. Every single thing in life that you're attempting to change that is not second nature to you yet requires discipline. Every single thing that I have achieved and accomplished was created from discipline. And every single thing that I have struggled with and had a hard time with, ha like had a lot of difficulty with, was also a lack of discipline. So what's important is to have the mindset and the belief and the faith and trust that even though we're not seeing things yet, they are working. So true. It is true. So in the areas that you find that it's hard for you to be disciplined, I bet you this is the mindset that's looping in your brain. It's the feeling of like, this is, this is what happens to people who can't do discipline. The feeling is like, even if I do it, it's not going to work. Even if I do this, Alina, it's not going to work. And it's that exact mindset and feeling that prevents you from being disciplined. You already are setting yourself up from failure. You're already believing, even if I do this, it's not going to work. And the only way that discipline works is if you truly believe that the thing you're doing is working. It will work. And that requires faith without evidence. It requires the believing that what you're doing every single day is working. Because I will tell you, you could do all the right things. You could go to the gym every single day and work out and eat clean and all this stuff. But if you don't believe it's working and you look at yourself in the mirror every single day and you tell yourself, ugh, this is not working, I'm still fat, that's why it's not working. Because your beliefs are that powerful. It's not about the things that you're doing. It's about like, who are you being when you're doing it? You gotta believe in the things that you're doing are working. That's how they end up working. So discipline in itself is faith that what you're doing is working. But the problem is, is we want evidence like tomorrow. We want evidence tomorrow in order for discipline to continue and that's not how it works. Discipline is that you believe that what you're doing is working and it's continuing to take action and holding the faith and the trust and the belief regardless of how fast the evidence comes because you can have anything that you continually work towards and you know that. But if you're having a hard time being disciplined, it's already the mindset behind that is that even if I do this, it's not gonna work and that's why you don't wanna do it. Discipline is believing as you do the thing, you're being changed in the moment without actually seeing, seeing the actual proof and evidence. That's discipline. You gotta trust in your becoming. You gotta trust that what you're doing is changing you right now, even though you can't see it with your eye. You know, it's just like little Rhea. Her hair is growing. She's learning every single day, even though she can't see it. I know that, you know that, right? It's the same thing with like Noah, measure me. Am I growing yet? Am I growing yet? You know he's growing, but he needs to see the evidence. We have to be patient. In entrepreneurship, Every single time you show up, every single piece of content that you put out, you're planting little seeds like a little farmer. Every single time you show up and you're actually convincing somebody to buy from you, to join your team, to follow you, even if they don't buy right away, every single time you put out a piece of content, you're planting a seed in someone's head and it's just a matter of their timing, not your timing. You know. If you're here right now and you're listening to this, you know you're capable of change. You're, you, you know that you're capable of having anything you ever wanted. Otherwise, you wouldn't invest your time here with me right now, which is amazing. So you already deep down know. Time is our greatest currency. It's not money, guys. Once you know how to make it, trust me, and then you can collapse time around it, you realize, oh my God, it's time. It's time is the most valuable currency that we have as humans. So if you're putting the time right now to listen to me and you are investing in listening to people and your self growth, then I already know you're ahead of so many people in the world because I already know that deep down you do believe in yourself. Otherwise you, put in, you would not put your time on the table for something you didn't believe would work for you. You do believe in you, you do, you're here deep down. You know you believe in you. The only thing that gets in the way is the fear that what if the time I do put in, it, it, it won't work out but you asked for courage and then the universe sent you something really awful 
And then you spend time questioning it. I don't know if I'm brave enough for this. Yeah, I know. That's why you asked for courage. And that's, that's why the universe sent you this thing so that you're supposed to get braver. You asked for this. You asked the universe to be stronger. You asked for strength. And then something heart stretching happened. And then you say, I, I don't think I'm strong enough for this. Yeah, I know. That's, that's why you got this thing. Because you asked for strength and you have to prove it now. You got to go get strong. But what if it doesn't work? Go find out. We're forged in the fire. Everything you ask for, it lands on your lap. But then you're questioning it and wasting time. It's like, go do it. I don't know if I'm brave enough. Go do the scary thing. That's how you become brave. January 1st, you woke up and you were like, this is going to be the best year ever. I'm going to make massive changes. I'm starting a business. I'm finding my dream partner. I'm going to blah, blah, blah. You declare to the universe and the universe puts me on your path to help you get there. And then you see this two day free masterclass. And then you all of a sudden are like, I don't know, I got time for it. I'm pretty busy because people sign up for so many things. They don't even show up for it. Right. But you asked for this. So prove it. I showed up on your path for a reason. So you're like, okay, 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 okay. I'm going to prove it. I'm going to get my calendar. Oh no, I can't make the lives. Okay. I guess I'm going to be a badass and put the replays in my calendar and set time aside on the weekend to watch the replays. Boom. You're a badass. Then Sunday comes and you watch them. Okay. Now what? Well, I want to do a self mastery program. But I don't have the money. I'm going to wait for people to invest in me. I'm going to wait to manifest it. Okay. But you just said that you wanted this. You just, you're asking people to invest in you before you invest in you. I, I don't know if you're an energetic master people to pay you if you don't even want to invest in you. And this is why then you doubt people will pay you because you're afraid to invest in you. But what if it doesn't work? Okay, so that's your belief. You want transformation, but you don't believe it's gonna work. You know what I mean? There, like, there's a little discrepancy here. Like, how are you gonna be an energetic match for everything you ever wanted if you get excited and then two seconds later, you're like, I don't know if it's gonna work. That's why it's not working. But you know it's gonna work. You're just scared. You're just scared. So what's your next move? Waiting, hesitating, thinking, over planning, waiting to not be afraid. That's how you got here in the first place. Happy to be here. Me too, Jennifer. You gotta move. You gotta move. Energy and motion. You gotta get in the momentum. But what if I'm not worthy of my desires? Oh my God, we're back at this again. Like here's something, honestly, here's something to think about. I, my clients will say this sometimes and people always say this, what if I'm not worthy of it? Okay, but seriously, if everything on this planet was free, would you even for a second question your worth? Would you even question that you're enough? It's, it's like, it's money stuff, guys. Like a lot of the fear is money stuff. And it's, and it's so sad because like the money stuff has such a hold on people and they're not living their life and doing what they got to do because they're so afraid. The problem is the money, because if I swear to God, if every single thing on this planet was free, you would be shouting from the rooftops. I believe, I believe in me. I believe I could be the greatest artist, the greatest entrepreneur, the greatest mentor, the greatest business coach, the greatest, you know, whatever it is. I believe I can be anything. But the second something costs something, we doubt. I don't know. Am I worthy of this? I can't have it. As long as money has power over your decisions and it decides what you can and can't be on this lifetime and then the money wins. And you know what's wild is that we're so conditioned by mainstream that it's normal to go and invest 30, 60, 80 K in post-secondary education into universities. But then we hesitate for like a $700 program that could actually be more beneficial because I will tell you, I went to university and I went to a post-grad and I paid through it. And I think it was like, and I'm being like 50 K that I put myself through. I'm not even using education. Do I regret it? Of course not. I had amazing experiences, but are you using your education? Because most of my clients that work with me don't use their education, but we've invested even more. And then now I look at it, I'm like, oh my God, I've learned more from coaching than I've ever did in education. You know, and I'm not saying anything against education because you definitely need it for certain things for sure. But it's like, 
we can go 60K in debt for post-secondary, but then other things, it's like, oh God, God forbid I invest in myself and my own self-growth and healing my traumas and getting where I want to go. You know, like, it's just wild that we do that, right? Now, I believe that, like, yes, for some of you, 100%, maybe $700 is a lot. It's a huge thing, and it could be a stressful investment, and I never want to, like, pressure anybody into anything. That's not what I do at all, you know? And I have many programs, like, there's the Mastering the Art of Receiving, that's $220, lifetime access. There's little things like that. But if you're even scared to invest, like, even $100 into yourself, and this can be, doesn't even have to be coaching. It could be, like, personal training or a nutrition something. Then it's, like, you got to look at yourself and be, like, how much like doubt do I have in myself if I came and put like $80 towards a nutrition plan or a $200 program, you know, like we got to look at that stuff because it really tells you that you do think you're a gamble and that's why things are not working. You know, like you got to get into momentum. What is your next move? We need momentum, energy, emotion, you know, there's so many entrepreneurs in here. And if you are scared that people aren't going to buy from you, then you got to look at yourself. Is it because you're really getting stuck in paralysis about your own investments? Everything that you want people to do, you got to be doing yourself. If you want people to honor your boundaries, you got to honor boundaries. If you want people to be brave, you got to be brave. If you want people to invest, you got to invest. If you want people to have integrity, if you want people to be like, whatever it is, you have to be doing it too. That's how we believe in people, right? It's the same thing in relationships, right? Like people always tell me like, oh, I want to manifest a fit, sexy, confident man who always honors his word and he's self-led and he loves me and da da da. Then I want you to look at that list and, and ask yourself, am I these things? Do I have integrity? Do I have confidence? Am I self-led? Because you attract your energetic matches, right? Now, I want to move into some content for entrepreneurs here. And so whether you're at the beginning or you're thinking about starting a business, because we do live in this age right now that like multiple streams of income is the way to go. But if you desire to have an online business and you want to grow your, in, your visibility, your influence, and you want to attract hell yes aligned clients that are like, yes, without you ever having to go into their DMs and annoy people, because that's how you burn bridges, I will tell you guys, just letting you know. But we have these free platforms for massive global connection. Before we had social media, I want you guys to really think about this. Like before we even had social media or even like the internet, like in order to get on TV or radio, in order to be visible in any single way for whatever art craft that you had, you had to either be really connected to someone that was in the line, that like was a producer, or someone in TV or radio. In order to be seen, you had to be connected, right? There was no other way before social media. Like if you wanted to be visible on a huge scale, you had to know somebody. And this is the thing. Artists back in the day before social media, they did not have the amazing freedom we did. They could not even be self-expressed. Back then, a producer or a director would have to tell you, wear this, tweak that, nip this, say this, do it this way. They had no freedom like we did. But we're so blessed because we get to just open our computers, our phones, and here we are visible. We get to wear what we want. We get to say what we want. We get to be who we really are. We get to look. Everything that we want to be, we get to be. Nobody gets to tell us how to nip it, tick it, <laughs> nip it, you know, tweak it, say it this way. We're so free. And we have these free platforms that connect us with people around the world. There really is no excuse to why people don't share their gifts and can make money off creating anything that they ever wanted. Like you can make money off the internet in so many ways, whether you innovate on a product, whether you share a message, a story, like I, and I really do believe, and I believe this for the longest time, like every single person on this planet has a gift. Either you're an artist, you're an innovator of a product or another service, either you're creative, either you're a content writer, a VA, a storyteller, a coach, a business coach, you innovate on people's ideas, products to make them better. The truth is, I believe we're all born to be entrepreneurs because I don't think God would tell us to go have to do the nine to five thing if that's not what we wanted to do, right? And like you guys know, we live in an era right now that you need multiple streams of income. 
What better way than this free platform where you don't even pay for it and you're globally connected to people around the world to share your gifts? If you're watching this, I guarantee that you're here to design your own life. I guarantee you have a limitless mindset. I guarantee you, you desire to be free. I guarantee that you want to be, do have what you want. You want to have financial freedom, time freedom. You want to be able to take a vacation for however long you want. This is the era of the digital entrepreneur. Our souls can't, I know that right now that the time of this world is crazy because the collective is rising and, and, it, and it's hard, but at the same time, it's beautiful. We got to look at that, but we chose to come on this planet during this time. And if you're in my world right now, there's a reason you're supposed to have this conversation. Chris is like, yes. Like, we don't even have to spend a penny to be visible. Do you guys get that? Artists who had to go in contracts. They couldn't even be who they are. They had to lose weight. They had to dye their hair and say things. Like, they did not have the freedom that we have. And like, we don't even have to pay for ads, nothing. Because I've never paid for a single ad. I'm making multiple five figures months consistently. I share my gift of coaching by posting on the very thing that we're using right now, and it's free. And this social platform, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, LinkedIn, is where I make myself visible for massive global connection. I don't have to wait for someone to tell me I'm worthy and I look a certain way to be seen. I never even had to wait for someone to give me a stage and a mic. I built my own stage. Your social media is your stage, and you got to build it if you want to be seen. I took the mic and I built my own stage. My social media is my stage. You know what? I didn't wait. I just did it. And you get to do that at any single moment. So out of curiosity, who here is an entrepreneur and who here desires to be an entrepreneur and desires freedom, desires a legacy, desires to be their own boss, desires to make multiple streams of income, who desires to have it all? Let me know. And I want to say, you know, if you're watching this and you're not even interested in this, Callie's like, yes. It's not, there's nothing good, wrong, bad about wanting to work a nine to five. We need people everywhere. Kim's like, yes, there's nothing wrong with wanting a particular life. There are people guys that their success is I want to be safe every day. And it's beautiful. I want to get up. I want to know what I get paid. You know, I want to have a predictable nine to five, Ryan, Amy, me, Jet, Callie. Yes, 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 yes. People, people want to wake up every single day, go nine to five, predictable salary, predictable paycheck. They know how much they're going to make. They know the little raise they're going to get. They know how much time they can take off, how many weeks. They know they're, they're going to have a retirement plan. They know predictably what it is, and people want that. That's for them is happiness and success, and it's beautiful because we need all of us. But for some of you, like me, you want to be limitless. You want to be able to take vacation time whenever you want for however long you want. You want to be able to stay home with your kids when they're sick. You don't want to have limits on your income. You want money coming in all the time. Hello, Rebecca. Hello, gorgeous. Right? And for some of you, it's just like, I want something more. I want to leave my mark. I want to leave my legacy. Yes, we can truly have it all. We can. So if you want that, you got to build your stage. And that's through your social media. I, like, we want to be free, wild entrepreneurs and our spirit is calling us to it but when you are a self-made person who didn't come from money like you didn't get to say ha huh, I want to open up a store let me just go ask my rich parents for a million dollars and put it on my credit card boom right that's the energy that some people get to work with but for a lot of us we don't operate that way I'm pretty sure for some of us it's like uh like, I can't even find room for like $2,000 on my credit card right now, okay? So for some of us, it's like, we got to be so freaking brave. Jennifer's like, yes, we can truly have it all. We got to be so brave. This is the entrepreneur mind. This is the entrepreneur mind. I desire this thing. I'm going to go invest a million dollars to open up my dream restaurant. I'm going to cook these steaks before I even get a penny back. That is the entrepreneur spirit. Entrepreneur people take the greatest risks, mentally, emotionally, physically, like uh, financially. We're the crazy people in the world. But aren't the crazy people are always the ones that change the world too, right? So there are entrepreneurs who are already in a million dollars in debt before they even make a penny back. They're cooking steaks. And the rest of us are like, we desire to be an entrepreneur, 
but most of us are building our online businesses like this. Well, once I make enough money for the coach and the branding, then I'm going to go invest. And then once I make amount of this amount of money, then I'm going to go invest in a team. No, 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 no. That is not the entrepreneurial spirit. You go first. The entrepreneur mind is I desire it. I will figure it out. I will build it. It will work. Whatever it takes, I'm all in no matter what. That's me. Build it and they will come. Build your stage. Take the mic. So why are we so scared to make investments into ourselves and into our businesses before the money comes in? You know why? Because most of us are still operating from the employee mindset and that doesn't work. If you're an entrepreneur, who here is an entrepreneur but you were first an employee before you started your business, which I'm sure most of you are. I obviously worked a corporate job before I became an entrepreneur, right? So I, I came from an employee mindset and this kind of messes us up, okay? Because when you're trying to be an entrepreneur with an employee mindset, it's like, well, once I sell the steak and I know for sure people are going to buy it, then I'm going to open the restaurant, then I'm going to do the branding, then I'll do the commercials, then I'll do X, Y, and Z. Yes, yes, yes. See? And meanwhile, every single brand that you aspire to, huge store, big restaurants, those people, if you, because I read a lot of books. And I love reading about successful people and how they built their things. And they are always the most self-made people ever. Like every person that you guarantee that you aspire to, they were already in probably six figures, millions of dollars in debt. And they hadn't even made a penny yet. And yet a lot of us are aspiring online entrepreneurs where we literally don't have that much overhead. Like for most of us, like unless you have products, but you can even work from your home with products, like you don't have to rent out a space. You don't need to get ads. We have a free platform, right? So people freak out. They're like a thousand dollars for coaching programs a lot. But then I'm like, okay, if you were to open up a restaurant, a store, do you realize how much money you have to invest in that? You got to pay for the actual land, the store. You got to hire the employees. You got to buy all the food. You're already in like six figures, millions of dollars of debt and you haven't made any money back. But most of us are aspiring to be free online entrepreneurs and we're like a thousand dollars is a lot. You know, that's what you got visa for. Visa believes in you, right? Like, but most online entrepreneurs are trying to do that. Like if I don't make this money back, I just invested in this program, this coach, this branding shoot that I did. If I don't get it back this month, I failed. Like, no, like, no, that's not how the entrepreneurial spirit works. So why that there's that quote where the entrepreneur jumps off the plane and builds the business on the way out. That's the entrepreneurial spirit. So true. Boss threatened to fire me when I got cancer and I went back to a job. Oh my gosh. Oh, that's crazy. But most like on, online entrepreneurs are doing this. They're the aspiring ones. And that's why it's not working. If you have this mentality, you can't be like, I need people to invest. I need to make sure that this works in a month. If I put this money in, I got to get results. Now that mindset is what is preventing you. You got to be all in no matter what you have to play for the long term or otherwise, like you're just going to seriously traumatize yourself. And that doesn't mean that you're not cut out for it, but sometimes maybe we've got to do some more emotional work before we put ourselves into this because we have to play for long term and you got to be consistent. You got to work on your emotions. You got to trust. You got to believe you can't ping pong. Once you're in, you're in no matter what for the long game. It's just like health and relationships. People are like, I'm just going to do this thing to get this thing. And that's fine. No, like relationships, your dream relationship is a long-term game investment. Your health is a long-term game investment. Your business, your legacy, your entrepreneurial thing is a long-term investment. It's not, I invest in this coach for a month and I need to have the return in a month or I'm not cut out for it. No, that's not how it works. That's not how it works. Most of us, we want to be limitless but we are not operating for an entrepreneurial mindset. We're still operating from the employee mindset. We like, we want that money, that paycheck to come in. You need the entrepreneurial mindset. If you're going to do entrepreneurial things, if you invest and you don't see an immediate return and you quit, that's not the entrepreneurial mindset. We are scared to go in debt. Because when we were employees, we knew at least if we put things on our credit card, we were going to get paid a certain amount in two weeks and a month that we could pay it off because B visa believes in you. Mastercard believes you. Otherwise it's like you wouldn't even get the credit. 
But Alina, I've been doing this for two months. I've invested. It's not working. How do you know? Okay, first of all, every, every time people tell me that, like, it's not working. How do you know? How do you know what people are doing behind the scenes? Because, well, no one's bought yet. But how do you know that they're not talking to their partners? How do you know that that person might take like a year for, to listen to you and to absorb your content before they decide that they're ready to go? How do you know people are not waiting for the next month and all of a sudden, like so many times in my launches that blew up was like, honestly, or usually the times where I'm like, I'm not doing this anymore, right? I'm having a bad day. And then it's like on the back end, I have like a huge compound effect because everything you're putting out is compounding, compounding. I don't know when it's going to blow up, but it is working. If you're being consistent, it's compounding. But when you tell me it's not working, how do you know? How do you know it's not working? How? How does the farmer not, like, he, he, he planted seeds, he's watering them every day, there's nothing sprouting. It's not working. How do you know it's working? How do you know? Never quit on a bad day, never. Just take a goddess bath and cry. <laughs> Guys, <laughs> last two days, today, two days have like been supposed to be so important to me and I've been crying the last two days, but that's how everything goes in my life. It's like, whenever I have something important, it's like the universe is like, oh yeah, you wanna teach people about emotional mastery? Prove it, let me send you some shit show. And I got so, it's crazy that this topic we're gonna talk about in a second about being misunderstood came up because I'm just like, ugh, heartache again, like by people I love and I'm like, and I know better, like I know people are not gonna understand me, but it's like, you still want it. And it's so heartbreaking, but I took a goddess bath. I cried, put some makeup on. We're here. We're good. We're going to be okay. I think I'm getting my period too. So, you know, that could be <laughs> part of it too, but it's okay. I just walked away from a 10 K grant and I'm doing this on my own all in Callie. You're freaking so brave. You're so brave and you're an energetic match for brave people. So you don't know that it's not working. You don't know. You say you want to make 10 K a month. It's not working. How do you know? How do you know that the next month that comes up was gonna be your 10K month? But then you decided to plug the, you, you unplugged and you said it's not working, but behind the scenes, people were ready to invest in you. All those posts, those lives, the time you took to build relationships, to comment back on people's stuff, like that compounds. Like less and less people literally comment and like on stuff. There are more people watching you in secret than you have any clue. Trust me. There are more people. People that jump in my office are always the people that never really like that much of my stuff. Only 10% of them do. There are more people watching than you know. People are really lazy to comment and like stuff. So I will say to you guys, and I feel like people are getting even more lazier about that. Like it does go a long way. If you, if you like something to go and like, and give some love to people because you know, to write content and to put out these things, like it does take work. So just doing that will make someone's day. I'm just going to put out there because us entrepreneurs, we know, right? Like it's, we, we put so much effort into this stuff, right? But people are getting lazier and lazier about that stuff. And then we're like, oh my God, I got two likes. No one loves me. But you had like 200 views on your video. 200 people watched it. That's something to pay attention to. Can you trust it's compounding? It's not about a launch and people buy on your watch. It's about their timing and when they're ready, you know, like, there is no timing in entrepreneurship. It's really about this. It's, it's literally faith more over evidence. It's faith over evidence. It's believing in the not seen yet and not unplugging before the results come in. Because most people unplug and I swear to God, right on the back end, they're about to get granted everything they ever wanted. I can't tell you how many people I see launch something and because no one bought the first day or the first week, they close the carts. They don't even go to the finish line because they're afraid of, oh my God, I'm going to look so bad. I don't have people in my program. No one signed up and they don't stay plugged in. And then the universe is like, I'm testing you. You've got to prove it because if you, if you can just unplug because no one bought the first day, then why is the universe going to send you these people who want to make sure you're there? Right? And if you can't commit to you, why are people going to commit to you? You've got to go through the finish line on everything. This is how you build your confidence. Keep your promises to yourself. I can't tell you guys how many times that people sign up for things like the day that I start a program and every single, like for almost four years, almost four years, every single program I have, there's always one or two people that join after the program's done. They don't come for the lives. They just want to binge it after every single program, every single program. And what if I decided I'm going to close the carts because no one bought the first week or the first few days, where would we all be? 
right? The thing is, people buy on their timing, not yours. Some people procrastinate. And also, look at yourself. Do you procrastinate sometimes? I know I jump in things late all the time. So then I'm an energetic match for that, right? But you've got to go through the finish line. Because the worst thing is, is like, you're going to be on your dying bed, and you're going to be like, oh, God damn it. I didn't even go see what I was capable of. Having an entrepreneurial mind is that you have to have faith without evidence. This is it. Consistently doing something over and over again, believing that it is working, you are growing, you are becoming, the faith that it's working. How invested and all in are you? How consistent are you? How bold are you? Because you want to know the fastest way that we blow up our business, influence and visibility, without spending a dime on any ads or annoying people with cold messages? Be bold. Like, unapologetically bold and loud. I've grown this brand without having to pay for, because I even coaches will promote people. I've never had a coach promote me. I've never paid for sales ads or cold message people, none of that stuff. I attract people because I'm constantly leading myself and I'm showcasing my evidence and I'm being unapologetically me. You want people to follow you? Then what you want is for people to literally be scrolling and be like, oh, who is that? And then they go down the rabbit hole and all your stuff. That's like the goal of magnetic marketing, getting people to follow you and buy from you because your content, your quotes, your pics, your graphics, your truth, your story is like, who is that? That's how you get them to stop and then go down the rabbit hole on your, all your stuff. All of it. If you're interested in doing like a mini four hour course on this, I have a thing called the influencer effect and it's like, 333, lifetime access. It just teaches you how to really magnetize people. But most importantly, and I talked about this yesterday, you know what really magnetizes people is that when they believe that you're not going anywhere because they believe you're no matter what human and that you are the walking, talking evidence of your work. Because it's so easy to be like, I did this, but did you really? Are you the embodiment of it? Because people get a weird vibe of people who fake things on the internet. You know, people buying luxury purses just to be like, I'm so rich. But is that yours? Like people can tell guys, they can. I see people do this all the time. People wanna make sure that you're not gonna take their money and run away. That's why you gotta show up every single day. That's why consistently showing up every day is so important as, as an entrepreneur. Like we live in an era where there has been never a better time to be seen, to be heard, to create your own stage, wealth, legacy. So let me ask you this. Are you being who you really are? Are you saying exactly what you want to say on your platforms? We have these platforms for massive global connection. Are you showing up and being bold and loud who you really truly are? Are you saying what you truly, truly want to say? Or are you holding back because you don't want to bother and trigger the peoples on the interwebs because you might get some hate? The hardest thing about it being an influencer and an entrepreneur who shares their truth and their life and their vulnerabilities and their stories is having people misunderstand you, having people disagree with you to the point that they're like, I'm going to shame you on the internet and take you down and try to slander your name. That is the hardest thing because success comes with duality. There's an energetic match and then there's the flip side. You will have people that are so magnetized to you and they're like, oh my God, I love you. And then you're going to have the polarity of that where people are like violently want to kill you and say crazy ass things to you. And their mission is I want to tear you down because I disagree with you so much. Are you still in? Prove it. Because there's an energetic flip side to success. Are you still in? This is why working on your emotional mastery is so, so important as an entrepreneur. It's more important than even like content and the strategy. It's having staying power. I'm not going anywhere, even though I'm getting a lot of hate. Let me go know in the comments if you have shared something that you've really believed in or you've been really bold or shared a picture and you've had someone say, you're wrong. I hate you. I hate this. I disagree with you. You're stupid. You're dumb. Go away. Let me know if you've ever had that. Even if you're, don't, if you're not even an entrepreneur, if you've ever shared something on your timeline and you've had someone be like, you're wrong. You are ugly. <laughs> you are awful. I disagree with you. Like, are you still in? This is what comes with entrepreneurship. That's why a lot of people, they get wobbly and then they hide because they get really scared. So I have a couple riffs on this because I'm going to go deeper into this because 
there's a few reasons that you might not be attracting your hell yes people because we're holding back from saying what we really want to say and we're holding back from who we fully really are. First of all, the biggest thing that we were so scared of is the fear of judgment, the fear of getting hate, the fear of being kicked out of the human tribe because that's one of actually the greatest, deepest fears as humans is not belonging. That's why you, you see people all the time. What if I'm not, I'm not relatable to my friends and family? What if nobody loves me? What if nobody likes me? What if it's lonely at the top like they say, right? Like we're so scared to be not belonging in a tribe. Other reasons we hold ourselves back is because we have been conditioned to follow since we've been little. If you want mind-blowing success, you want to have a magnetic brand, you want freedom, you want to change people's lives, you want to make an impact, you have to be so bold, so unapologetic. And we have a hard time with this because we have been heavily programmed to be humble and we've been heavily programmed to be followers since we were born. From the moment that you step on this planet, you're conditioned to follow. To follow your parents. Follow what the teachers say. Follow what your coach says, you know, like your sports coach. Follow what the social media, the, the media says. When you're a baby and toddler and a child, like, yes, of course, we need wisdom from the adults. We got to survive the early stages of our life, right? But the issue is, is because we're so heavily programmed to follow from the moment that we're born, is then we forget how to lead ourselves. We forget how to trust our intuition. We don't even know who we, who we are sometimes. We don't trust our own judgments. We over, overthink our posts. We overthink our lives. We overthink what we're wearing. We're overthinking what we're going to say. We literally abandon our dreams and desires. We don't even know how to tell the world that we're great because if you're out there and being loud about your greatness, you're a bad person. That's what the world teaches you. No wonder it's so hard for us to be fully, fully seen and heard. And then we shrink and dim. And that's why people can't find us. We're programmed to believe that if we follow the rules, if we follow society's rules, you're going to be happy and successful. We're conditioned to believe that if you follow what society says, then you're going to be liked and accepted. But if you misbehave and you try to do it your own way, address your own way and speak your own way, you're going to literally banish from society. So we try to be so perfect. And I see it. Like people hold back in their brands. They want to be perfect and do the thing that doesn't really trigger or bother people. God forbid I get kicked out of the human tribe. So we're constantly trying to be perfect. We're trying to do everything what else is doing. We're, we're doing what we're told. We pursue careers and jobs based on what people tell us. And then we wonder why we're not happy and why we're anxious and depressed. And we're desiring something more but we're squashing it because we're so scared to be different because we're scared to disrupt the status quo because we're so scared that if I lead and I be different and I stand out, God forbid, I'm going to be outcasted from the tribe. This is subconsciously looping in our head. The fear of not belonging weighs so heavily on us. We're so scared not to belong that we play small. We shrink. We edit our posts. Ooh, I don't know. That might be bad. We hold back. And at the core of all of this, we're so scared to say what we really want to say because from childhood, we're conditioned that we need validation in order to trust ourselves. Until someone tells me that this is the right thing to say, I can't say it. Until someone validates me, I cannot do what I want to do and I cannot say what I want to do because I'm not being validated. This is also childhood conditioning, the need for validation. The moment you're walking, and talking as a child, all you hear is like, good job, you did it. Good job, you're such a good girl, you brushed your teeth. Good job, you're dressing nicely. Good job, you got a test on, you got an A on your test. Good job, you have friends. Good job, you made the soccer team. We're so proud of you, mommy's so proud of you. This is what we heard and all we do is seek validation. A lot of people have a hard time being motivated because they need validation in order to be motivated. It's so crazy. Unconsciously, it's like I can't move until someone tells me I'm doing it the right way. Until I'm validated, I can't be motivated. If no one's clapping, cheering me on, approving of me, if I'm not getting a lot of likes and shares and comments on my stuff, I cannot move. If I'm not validated, I cannot be consistent. You would be shocked about how many people use validation for motivation. And the second it goes away, it's like, it's not working. Something I see so much in this industry is like people become really like successful quickly 
And then something really shitty happens is they tend to fall in love with the validation, the feeling of being seen and heard. And so then a lot of their actions are attached to people seeing them and hearing them. And then all of a sudden, the algorithm changes. Oh no, the algorithm changes or somebody else comes in hot and heavy and they're not getting seen as much and heard as much. Someone comes up in the industry getting more visibility and then all of a sudden, the people who are so shiny don't know how to lead themselves anymore. They don't know how to get motivated anymore because everything was attached to external validation, external circumstances, external likes and seeing and being heard a lot. And it's like, if I'm not seen and heard and I'm not getting a likes, then I can't show up. As soon as something happens, it's like they don't even know how to lead themselves anymore. That's not the entrepreneurial way. We lead no matter what, even if nobody liked us on our post. And this is what happens, people stop. And then the second that you stop, you break the compound effect and people stop following. And then they get in their heads, oh my God, I broke it, I'm broken, I've lost my magic, I've lost my magic. I see this so much in the online space. It's like they skyrocket, something changes in the algorithm, they don't know how to move, then they mess up their compound effect and they think that they're broken and they've lost their magic and then they quit. You can't grow a huge brand if you're always leaning on validation. Validation's fun. Of course it is. Who doesn't want a little validation? Of course. But it can't be the thing. Waiting to be validated so that you're motivated to move will keep you a prisoner to external circumstances. If you need to be validated to make moves in your life and to be motivated, then you're not a leader. You're a follower because you're the mercy of other people. Until people give you the validations, you're not moving. Now you're not the leader. And this applies to all areas of your life. Looking validation to know if you're doing the right thing. Hey mom, am I doing the right thing? Hey partner, no, we don't ask for validation. We go, we trust our intuition. We, we just go. If you're gonna lead people and you wanna have a big brand and you want people to move with you, you gotta be moving regardless if people are clapping. And, you're, and I'm telling you, the bigger you grow, the less people clap. It's like you become their secret weapon. People don't want to know about you and then just people getting lazy about the liking and the sharing. But it's still all working as long as you're moving and you're the evidence of it. You got to be leading no matter what. No validation needed. You don't need the validation that you're doing well. If you believe that it's the right thing to do and you feel it in your soul, then go do it. That's the, that's the, that's the vibe, guys. Leaders speak Move, go, invest, make the move without a drop of validation. They're not asking anybody, hey, is, am I doing it right? Hey, am I looking right? Does this look okay? No, they just go. And leaders attract people who want to walk with them. You don't need to be seen and heard. And look, look in your life right now. Where are you needing validation in order to make movement in your life? Like this is the energy of successful people. We go, we speak, we move. Three, two, one, we fire. Regardless if people are approving, if they like it, if they're clapping, we just go. Here's the other thing. The biggest reason people buy from us is when we are doing and being and having what they want. You gotta be the evidence of what you're selling and what you're talking about. You gotta be the evidence of what's possible. And you gotta show that, you do. And this is what's really hard because we have a hard time showing like our body and our, our money celebrations and posting our wins and the fact that we're in love with our partners. We're so afraid because we're so conditioned, you better be humble. If you're loud and proud and you're running around telling people you're great, society will tell you you're not a good person. It's like, it's, which is kind of funny because like when you're little, they're like, be confident, the teachers will tell you. Be confident, your parents will tell you, but don't go telling people. Don't go telling people, don't go showing off, don't go claiming you're important because then you're a bad person. If you're great, you keep it to yourself. That's what we're told. <laughs> and it's okay for parents and teachers and your sports coaches to tell you that you're great, but you're not allowed to say that you're great. You don't tell people, you need to be humble. And this is what holds us back in entrepreneurship because we're like, oh my God, am I being a bad person, right? And then we're always showcase really powerful people that went the wrong way and they're like, look what you're gonna become if you're gonna be all loud and proud about your greatness. Like, 
what makes you a good person is if you actually pretend that you're actually not that good enough and you play stupid and smart and stupid and dumb and you pretend like you don't know anything, then you'll fit in, right? But be confident, but just don't tell people and don't show it, okay? That's what makes you a good person. Right. And then it's like wild because I'm sure you've had this experience, guys, at the beginning of your journey where it's like you're having a really amazing month and it's whatever. You're having an amazing time in your life. You're successful. You're happy. You're doing the things you want to do. And then all of a sudden you walk in a space where everyone's complaining about everything. And so you're like, "Ooh, I better dim down. I better come up with something that's really not working in my life so that I fit in. God forbid I let people know how happy and successful I am, how in love I am with life, because I'm going to be a bad person. So we calibrate down. And then we're signaling not the good stuff out there, and then we're going to start attracting it. Don't do that. You know? We're seeing people celebrate and be loud and proud for their success, and then we're also seeing, oh my God, they're getting haters. I don't want that. Right? We're, we're scared. We're scared to be loud and proud about how great we are. So we dim and we stay small and we pretend we're stupid and we actually make up stuff to make us feel like we fit in that's really not working in our life instead of celebrating our greatness. Because you got to celebrate. You have to. This is like one of the strategies in business is like you got to be the evidence. You got to be the walking, talking evidence of what you're selling. Okay, how are people going to invest in you if you're not showing evidence like you're going to sell body programs, but you don't going to show off your body. You're going to sell like a relationship program, but you're not going to show off your happiest relationship. You're going to sell a product that works, but you're not going to show it off like you have to or you can spend a lot of money on ads and maybe get one person who buys. We don't want to do that. Here's the thing, guys, like. You're not going to please people. That's a fact. And you're going to probably piss off people. Your grandma and grandpa and babcha and people are going to get angry. That is a fact. You're going to get so misunderstood. So misunderstood. That is a fact. You're going to get hate. Sorry, but you are. That's a fact. But at the exact same time, you're going to be understood so perfectly and so loved for exactly who you are. And you're also going to be understood by some people, but they're still going to be like, I still don't like you. And I'm going to tell you about it. Okay. I get what you're doing, but I don't like you. And you got to be okay with all of it. And you got to work on your emotional core because every single time you give your energy where you're not liked, where people are telling you you're wrong, your energy literally leaks. When I started this business and I started to grow more influence, I'd get like a hundred of people telling me they love me. And then I'd get like one or two people who did not And I'd get in my head and heart about it so much. And it would drain all my energy and I'd completely forget all the hundreds of people that told me they love me and I would just focus on the one or two and I could literally feel my energy coming through, like just dropping. And then I'd coach myself through, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay, I'm going to be okay. People still love me, it's okay, right? There is, like, it's an impossible ratio to get 100% of love. Even though people don't love all Oprah and Tony Robbins, people slander them all over the internet too. Just this, just what like life is. Here we are, the human, right? So you got to catch yourself. When people love you, focus on the people who love you, not the two people that don't like you, because you're gonna drain all your power and you'll focus on it, focus on it. And what happens with the more you focus on people who don't like you, the more you're gonna attract them. So don't do that. We have to be so self-responsible with our energy and our power, because if you come in this online space. Or in just in general, you walk into rooms and you, you want to be liked by everybody, you're going to be so miserable in your life. You're going to be so miserable in this space. You have to learn how to have no matter what power. I still love me, even though people are telling me they don't like me and I'm bad and I'm stupid and I'm evil. I still stand for what I believe in, even if I'm so misunderstood, even if my whole family misunderstands me. I still love me. I still have conviction. Because if you can only show up, and want to be liked and need validation, then people own you. You're, you're mercy at other people, and you'll always be wobbly. It's one, one, one. Let's make a wish and be brave. It's easy to show up and people are clapping for you and telling you you're doing an amazing job and publicly you're getting all the likes, that, but that's only circumstantial power. We want personal power, no matter what power, no matter if people like me or not, I still love me, I'm still convicted in what I stand for, I'm still strong, and I'm gonna choose to focus on the people that love me, not the two people who don't. And the people who are vocal and they tell you all the things, 
you still got to tell yourself, I love myself and I, I stand strong for what I believe. I got this. I'm going to be okay. This is the only way to have fun and be successful in this online space is to accept that you're not going to be liked by everybody. You're going to be so misunderstood, so misunderstood, and you, but you're not going to please people. You can't even please people in your family. All you people pleasers, you know this. The recovering ones, you know this. You did everything for everybody all the time and they still bitched about things and were not happy about it. That's what happens. You will have people who love everything about you, maybe one or two things they don't like and they don't align with. And then you'll have people who hate everything about you and they'll tell you about it. And it's gonna hard, be hard to show up in your business if you feel like everybody needs to love you 10 out of 10. This is where you're gonna hold back things about you. Don't hold back. If you wanna show off your sexy body and a nipple in your shirt, do it if that's who you are because you're gonna attract your exact energetic match of people who love you 10 out of 10. If you focus on the one person or you're worried about what someone might think, like it's gonna drain all your energy. Give gratitude to the people who love you 10 out of 10 and know, because I know this now from working with so many people, is that people will still hire you even if they love you only seven out of 10. Only a portion of the world, like a small portion of the world will love you exactly 10 out of 10. Elizabeth, agree. When someone criticizes you, it often says more about them than not about, yeah, 100%. And don't lower your standards because if you start fighting with them or make them feel about that they're winning, you be the leader. You be the leader, okay? Like I would tell you people buy from me and they'll tell me, listen, I love you and I love what you teach, but I don't like this and this about you, but I'm still gonna buy from you and learn from you. And I'm like, that's amazing. And those people have a lot of emotional intelligence, right? Because that's the truth, guys. You can still learn from me if you don't love me 10 out of 10. You know you can mute certain parts, you know that, right? If you don't like something about me, my sexiness, whatever, you can mute that, but you can still learn from me. I can still activate you and teach you things to the next level, but you don't have to like every part of me. Every mentor I've hired, I don't like every single part of them. There's something that bothers me and I just mute that part. Because I have the emotional intelligence to be like, hey, I can still learn from this amazing person, even though I don't agree with this and this. This is emotional intelligence, right? But the hardest thing for me on this journey I've been tested with it a lot the past couple of days is like when people really disagree with me and like really tell me things like they dislike and they try to slander my name and say that they're gonna like squash me or like they literally take everything that I stand for which I think is amazing and they twist it and try to say I'm a bad awful person and they want to make me suffer for it and then and you know it still hurts me because I'm a human and I'm like but why like how so as you grow your influence and your brand you're gonna draw people in like this whose beliefs are so opposite of yours, like fundamentally opposite of yours, and they get so angry and so triggered that they're gonna wanna stop you. They might make you doubt with their comments. I see entrepreneurs get in their head all the time. They, they say something to them and they, they doubt and then they hesitate and they don't show up that day because the one person got in their head, don't do this. You gotta be so strong in your conviction, in your message. I'm so strong in my conviction, like every part of me Every cell that radiates in my body believes in what I'm doing, that I'm doing something really great on this planet. I do believe I'm doing something impactful and right. I do believe I'm a great person and I know I'm doing something right. I have no doubt, none of it. But it still hurts to hear things, especially from people that you love, you know, and it's like, it's disappointing, it is. So you have a goddess bath, you cry, and then you get your ass up and you, you show up with strong conviction again. I have the wisdom to know when I have the wisdom now to know, guys, when people are really having power trips and I'm not going to fight back. Then my biggest fear, I'll tell you, is like having someone really powerful misunderstand me. That's scary. But I'm not going to let it wobble me because people have power trips. People have a bad day and they want to go take it out on you. Don't fight back. Don't lower your standards because the moment that you fight back, now they're the one leading you because they were just led your emotions and energy. Fighting for power, that's not what I'm interested in. I'm not even interested in anymore having conversations with people who radically stand against for what I stand for. That's just not something that I battle with at all because where I see people lose their power and in this industry, and it's really hard for me to watch mentors and coaches fighting with each other because I'm like, oh, come on guys. It's not what we're here to do, you know? Like, we gotta be the role models, the examples, right? But, like, people lose themselves. They lose their power and their leadership fighting with people who are only concerned with being right. 
and they only want to cancel you. That's all there was. So just don't even fight with them. There's no point. There's no point even having this conversation. You just got to look at it. If it makes you upset, work on your emotions and get back up and keep going. There are some people who just want to fight to be right and cancel you. Don't go lose your power and leadership to them. Honestly, the best wisdom that I can give you, and this applies to any relationship you ever have, your exes, all the things, let them be the last one to say the ugly, nasty, mean thing. And then let you keep the memory of how you stayed in your power and you stayed in your leadership and emotional intelligence and continue to move towards your dreams. Let them be the one who has the memory of being the one that said the ugly last thing. Don't let it be you. Don't let it be you. This is my vibe in every relationship. I am the one or I am the one that got away. Always, always, always. I never want to look back in my life and know that I was the one that said something really evil and mean to someone, even if they did something bad to me. I don't want those memories. You keep those memories. I keep the memory of where I stood in my power. That's the vibe. It's better thing to be, honestly, the best memory you can have is the one where you're really proud of how you led yourself. Not that you took your power and went to go squash somebody else and tear them down. Don't do it. In your life, in my life, the way I lead myself is I want to look back and be so proud of the woman that I was and how I led myself in every single situation. In every relationship you have, business, career, where your bosses, romantic relationship, just be, just be the one or the one that got away. Always, always, always. Be proud. Live your life like you're on the Truman Show. I swear to God, especially if you're like a role model, you want to be a leader, live your life as if you're on the Truman Show. The universe is watching. The world is watching you right now as this person is trying to tear you down and send malicious, evil things to you. But everybody's watching. How do you lead yourself? How would you lead yourself if the world was watching you every single day? How would you lead yourself if your client was watching you? If you can live your life this way, oh my God, the kind of magic that you're gonna be magnetize, like magnetizing into your life is next level, next level. So coming back to this, magnetizing our aligned buyers and clients in this online space, like. You have two choices. You can use power or you can use force. The people who use their power to attract clients do it by speaking their truth, being unapologetically themselves. They care about relationships. They respond to comments and messages. They magnetize people by activating them and by being the embodiment of what they teach. They are the evidence of everything that they sell. And then there are people that build their businesses based on force. Those are the people who need to lean in on people, cold message people, push people, use fear tactics, manipulation to get them to do things. If I'm gonna give you some advice, I would use the power magnetizing kind of route because I love to magnetize people into my world. The biggest like thing that I do is just I'm unapologetically myself. I speak my truth. I write from my heart. And sometimes I bother people, but whether it bothers people or not, I still do it. And I am the walking, talking evidence of my work. That's why you see me celebrate the things that I manifest, my, room, my, my relationships, my body, my money, all of it. I'm proud of myself and I'm loud and proud. And those who desire that kind of lifestyle come into my world because people buy from you and want to walk with you when you are being, doing, and having what they want. you got to be the evidence of your work. And that means you got to be really brave about showcasing that because... People do not care what you know until what you know has worked for you. This is why being proud and loud and celebratory for yourself is so important. You gotta showcase the evidence of this. This means that your grandma might not like it and your mom might not like it. Are you still in? This means that sometimes you're gonna get so misunderstood and possible hate from even people you love. Are you still in? Because you are gonna bother people. You're gonna trigger people, but guess what? Everybody is bothered by something. Have you guys realized this? Everywhere I look, people posting things, gossiping about things. The thing is, people do get so bothered by extraordinary people. So if you're bothering a lot of people, you're doing a good job. Because that's what I, and I started this call saying this, but like the moment someone just doesn't feel good about themselves when they're around you, they're going to make it about you that somehow you're the evil one. 
when really it has to do with their own insecurities and their own self-worth that they have to work through. But they'll make it about you. Don't let them get in your head. Don't let them make you doubt. The moment that somebody feels inferior around you, they're going to make it about you. You're the bad one. There's something about this. Because we're so brainwashed to not be loud about our greatness. Loud, extraordinary people bother people. It comes with success. And I'm going to tell you right now, if you're going to stand out, you're going to attract people who love you so much, your people. You don't even need that many people to make a lot of money. Like I had 56 clients before I, when I hit six figures. It's, it's, it's a lie that you need so many followers and all this stuff. You don't. But when you stand out, you got to be okay with the fact that you're going to bother people. Bother them. And then go change the world. Because I'll tell you right now, People are bothered and triggered by something all the time. So why don't you just do it? Who cares? Either you bother them or Ryan bothers them or Deanna bothers them. So you're going to be okay. I want you to be loud and proud. Because to be honest, the extraordinary people that bother a lot of people are also the people that make people rise. I'm not saying go trigger people, make them mad and be an a-hole, okay? I'm just saying you go be loud and proud about your accomplishment because what it actually does is it does call people to rise. Sometimes I have so many testimonials of people tell me like, you used to trigger the shit out of me, Alina, and now I'm in your containers and I love you and you've activated me. Sometimes guys, like in order to rise, in order to be really activated, sometimes we're bothered a little bit. I had so many clients tell me that. <laughs> And now they love me, but they're like, you bothered me a lot. But guess what? Sometimes we get bothered into our excellence. We get bothered into excellence. We get triggered into greatness. So bother people. I promise you they're already bothered by something else anyways. Why don't you just be the one that bothers them and possibly calls them to rise. But playing yourself small, pretending that you're not great, pretending that you're dumb, pretending that you're not really that successful, telling the world that you're not great just so you don't bother someone on the internet, just so that you don't get the hate that comes with the confidence that you have, you're not gonna make it an entrepreneurship because that's what happens. You can't pray for visibility and power and influence and at the same time, hold back telling the world that you're great because you're afraid of the hate that comes with the confidence. Stop that. Stop it, stop it, stop it. Go bug them. Go bug them. It's going to be okay. A lot of people you bug, you'll bug them into their greatness. You'll call them to rise. This is the greatest time to be alive. I know it's the craziest time, but the world is waking up and it's beautiful. We have this global connection here. We have these free platforms connected to everybody around the world. The more that you are who you are, saying what you got to really say, the more you're going to attract those people. Don't hold back. You will mess up. You will say something that's really wrong. But if you keep going, people love a leader that makes a mistake and they keep going. I've made so many mistakes and I will probably still make mistakes. But guess what? I'm more relatable in that way because I don't really want to learn from people who are perfect. They're not really relatable and nobody's really perfect. They're pretending, right? People want to learn from people who mess up and people want to learn from people who are constantly walking. They don't want to pay you because you know something, because you've already walked. They want to pay you because you're walking. And it's okay that you trigger them into it. It's okay. I'm not saying do it on purpose. I'm just saying be you. You should be shining and loud and proud, okay? Everyone wants to be a leader so they can go have an empire so that they can change the world and change people. You just go change yourself. You want people to follow you, buy from you, you know, share your stuff. Lead yourself. Change yourself first. And people will change around you because more than anything that changes people is evidence. Evidence. Change yourself because people need the evidence. I want to see your celebrations. I want to see you celebrate in this group. Any manifestation. I want to see you madly in love. I want to see your money. I want to see all of it. I want to see you celebrate your accomplishments all over the internet. I want to see you madly in love with yourself, with your body. I want to see your sales growing. I want to see your beautiful, happy family. I want to see your manifestations. I want to see your wins. I want to see your body. I want to see your vacations. I want to see you madly in love and kissing your man. I want to see all the beautiful things you're doing. 
it's the evidence that makes people rise. It's the evidence that makes people change. So you got to go and be proud. Stop with this humble stuff, okay? And if people give you hate for it, let it go. Because truly, if people only like you when they feel inferior to you, that's not love. You're better off. You're better off. Your journey will have pain. And you will have people who love you and they will disappoint you and your heart will get stretched some more. And like I said, every time your heart gets stretched, the bigger it becomes. The more stronger you become, more resilient you become, the more braver you become. You're going to fail along your way. You're going to say something wrong. But that's how we get results and that's how we become better. Because the only way to succeed is to just go all in, go for it, no matter what, and figure it out as it comes. So there is a sequence to being successful. You become strong first, emotionally strong. I got this no matter what. You become brave. I'm going to be okay no matter what happens. I'm going to be okay no matter what happens. You got to become brave. And then you fire. And then you get results. And then you celebrate and you go again. Most people only go when they get results. Until people tell me they're going to buy from me, until people like me, until people validate me, then I will go. That's not the way we do it, right? You got to go, which means you go. And then if you fail, you go again. But most people do this. They wait for results, then they go, and then they fail, and then they wait another 10 years because they got to think about it because they're trying to aim because I launched my offer and it didn't really go well and now I have to think about it so that it never happens again. So I'm going to do it for the next 10 years to make sure it never happens again. Don't do that. Okay? Just fire. You failed. You're going to be okay. You're going to survive. Go again until it works. The ability to lead yourself when it's difficult and uncertain, that's, that's the goal. We want to be self-mastered in our mental I'm going to be okay no matter what. Even if I fail, I'm going to go again, 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 again until it works. Even if people get mad, even if people hate me, I'm going to be okay. I'll do better next time. I'll go again, 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 again until it works. Compound of courage. Then you get the results. Then you get confident. And then eventually you celebrate your results. That's it. Okay? And for those of you who are interested in the self-mastery program, where you like this vibe, the last thing we've been talking about, we're going to go so deep into this for four weeks. You're going to become the most bravest, confident, self-led human. You're going to learn how to lead other people. We're going to learn emotional intelligence. I'm going to teach you so much strategy to help you be disciplined. I'm going to help you self-actualize, which is the greatest gift that you can ever give yourself. You're going to go see what you're actually capable of. You're going to learn your personal power. And then the next month, I'm going to be launching my Soulful Sales Program. It's my sales program. So if you're an entrepreneur and you want to learn how to be confident in selling, the mindset, launch strategies, money work, posting on social media. I'm actually also going to do a bonus. I'm adding my social media program, which is $777 for free in the Soulful Sales bundle. So if you join Soulful Sales, you get that program and the influencer effect, which is $1,000 of value right there for that program. And then me and my little beautiful VA, we're going to work on posting in the next 48 hours an offer that's going to be either, I think it's going to be like, I'm going to sell it for $9.99. If you want to do the self-mastery program and soulful sales, which includes a social media program, I'm going to give it to you guys for $999. And you can do a payment plan as that, on that as well. I'm only going to do it for 48 hours. I'll do a little blitz in here. So you'll see that coming up. I will be doing the draw on Monday. So somebody will learn win a free intuition, free intuition, a free tuition, um, or two programs that are 50% off. So that is also open to men as well. The only program that's not open to men is the goddess code program. But if you're interested, come in. Now I have one more thing to say though. I have something actual awesome to say. I need water. Okay. I'm going to wrap this masterclass up. Okay. And there's nothing to do with, um, entrepreneurship, but if you want it all, Anything in your life, you have to go first. You've got to make the first move, energy and motion. You've got to get in the momentum, okay? You've got to go and prove when things get hard. Having everything you've ever wanted, to be honest, is what I've realized. Having everything you ever wanted and like manifestation is the art of being hyper-conscious that you are alive. And if you're alive, you can change anything because you can put your conscious effort into anything. Beyond that, if you're breathing, which you are because you're watching this, you're alive, which means you're blessed. If 
I'm alive, that means I can be anything that I want. What is more better than the fact that you're alive? If you've manifested on this planet, like, you're magic, you're alive, you can be anything that you ever wanted to be. A lot of times people do this thing where they're always waiting for something bad to happen before it jolts them into remembering they're alive. They need a rebirth, resurrection. But when you just realize that I am alive and it matters now, I can now change my life. I don't know why humans do this thing, but it's always like the death experience, losing someone they love, almost losing themselves to addiction. Something big always has to happen before people are like, I'm alive, I can do something about it. I've realized now I can change my life. I have the power now. But what I want you to remember from this is that if you're breathing right now, you have the power you need right now in this moment to change anything in your life. Because the truth is, you can be physically alive and spiritually dead because that's what unconsciousness is. That's most of the world, walking around unconscious. But a human who is conscious, who is conscious and alert to the fact that they're alive, that's the most incredible thing. The fact that you're here breathing and alive, there is no greater, more powerful thing on the planet. And if there is anything else that you desire to be, then go create it because you can, because you're alive. I will tell you, it will not matter when you're richer, it will not matter more your life if you're fitter and skinnier, it will not matter more if you are with a perfect partner, living the perfect life, but if you want it, like go get it. You can create it, you can go manifest it, but you're alive and that is the most important thing. Manifestation, creating the life of your dreams is the understanding that if you're alive and your heart is beating, you can be, do have anything because you're alive and you can go create it. Don't wait for something bad to happen before you go just change your life. Don't wait for the rut, the, the, the downfall, the, like, don't wait for something really bad to happen. Just go do it right now. The one, number one regret of the dying is that they wish that they did the thing that they wanted to do. Right now, you're the youngest you'll ever be. Go move. Go move the problem. You move your problem, you change your life. Go take the risk that you need to do. Go make the next move. Okay, whatever happens, now what? Now what do I want to do? But you're going to be okay. But stop waiting for things outside of you to change. You go do something and everything around you will change. And stop waiting for things to fall apart before you're like, oh no, now my life matters. It matters now, it always does. Now is the time to change anything. Everything you're doing now is manifesting your future. So you're alive. Go create the things you want to do. Go make moves. Use this energy to go make your next move. I have loved this masterclass. I love you guys so much. Thank you for being here. There's going to be another masterclass next month. Um, and if you're interested in any programs, just DM me. I'm going to be putting some links in here later on today with my VA. Um, and then we're going to do the draw on Monday. And if you guys have any questions, let me know. So when we do the draw, you can hop on and ask questions as well. I'll put, the, I'll put it in the events section. But thank you so much for your time. I know how much... Your time is meaningful, and so it means a lot for me, for you guys to spend this time with me. I have loved this. I love you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And if you feel like somebody needs to hear this information, tag them, share, the, share this. Oh, you can't share this out of the group, but you can add them into the group. Men are welcome to it. Teenagers are welcome to it. Don't you guys all wish we had conversations like this all the time in school? Would it have been amazing, right? Um, and yes, and if you need an extended payment plan on anything, just feel free to reach out. You can write payment plan or any program that you're interested in. But I will be putting links later on. I'm going to go have a nature walk with my puppies. They're laying below my feet. They didn't bark, which is good. Um, but I will be back next month for another master class. So also, if you're new in this group, there's a guide section full of lots of master classes. Um, so go binge on those. Everything connects with each other and builds off each other. Thank you. Yes. Hearing this is amazing energy. Oh, I'm so happy, Shelly. Okay. Mwah. I love you. I'm going to go for a walk, but I'll be in here and I'm going to put the, the draw in the event section. Okay. Thank you guys. Bye, beautifuls. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, I love you too. <laughs>